In the 1950s, the TV dinner was born in the United States. Advertisements pitched these dinners as easy, which could therefore free up more time for watching television. Appealing to convenience is very compelling as well as convincing. We live in the era of specialization and there's nothing wrong with that. We can outsource the effort we don't want to exert and save our energy for activities we prefer. Makes sense, right? Of course. In recent years, society has undergone profound shifts in the way that items can be purchased. Technology is advancing rapidly. Almost anything can be delivered to your doorstep. Groceries can be ordered through apps. Most restaurants have partnerships with delivery companies and it's a lifesaver for many. Nowadays, one can take a much more passive role as an eater and make food decisions on a whim with very little planning or foresight. This message of let us do the work for you is pervasive in food industry marketing and is a very convincing argument, especially when feeling overwhelmed or strapped for time. Fast food options are priced to create an illusion of value and have caused many people to no longer need grocery stores. Many people are abandoning the kitchen altogether and choosing meal delivery services. We think this can be a part of the problem, not for everyone, but for a growing number of people who feel disconnected from food. Has that been you? Why would someone spend an hour getting groceries, an hour cooking, and then 20 or so minutes cleaning up only to get a meal that wasn't as yummy as the one they could have purchased. The argument in favor of grocery shopping and cooking is not always convincing, right? Especially if the individual lives alone or with one other. I get it, but get this. Many people have abandoned cooking. It is oftentimes these people that have a ruptured relationship to food and have a hard time breaking through health-related barriers. Meanwhile, ratings for cooking shows and social media accounts displaying delicious food are at an all-time high. One reason that restaurants and convenience foods are winning is because their food is engineered to elicit the highest possible dopamine response. Simply put, food created for commercial purposes are designed to be more palatable, which in turn means more profitable. In some cases, highly palatable foods can recruit addiction-like processes in the brain. This may include feeling uncomfortably full and not wanting to stop eating or feeling physically full, but still feeling hungry. Hopefully you're feeling more attuned to your hunger and fullness cues. This work you're doing is so important. Keep going. People who eat mostly restaurant food that's generally high in added oil, salts, and hidden sugars eventually stop enjoying food that doesn't meet this standard of palatability. And this is a real problem for today's youth. In other words, the more convenience food one eats, the less likely they are to enjoy more simple food preparations. And this is related to the concept of reward expectancy, modulated by the neurotransmitter dopamine. It has recently been suggested that reducing highly processed food expectancies may improve diet, which may broadly affect health. One way to do this is to plan and cook more of your meals at home. The good news is that food-related tolerance doesn't take long to recalibrate. Your homemade meals might not taste as good as restaurant meals at first, but as you get better in the kitchen, you can start to taste your food more intensely without the added oil, salts, and sugar. I genuinely want that for you. We've developed a theory that the more people become disconnected from food, the more dysregulated their eating can become. We define disconnected as no longer being actively involved in the process and dysregulated as the loss of ability to successfully manage responses. Our ancestors used to hunt and forage and would always be planning their next meal. Too often, folks stop planning their meals and favor choosing what appeals in that moment. While there is something valuable about unpredictability and novelty around food, we're proposing that the no planning approach has contributed to hedonic eating. Disconnection from food is one factor in the rising prevalence of disordered eating. This can include overeating, undereating, confusion, and regret around food choices. At Wise Mind Nutrition, we're proposing that the value of shopping and cooking goes way beyond reclaiming ingredients. While it's undoubtedly true that cooking your own food creates more opportunity to use anti-inflammatory foods and ingredients that are beneficial for mental health, the benefits also extend to our relationship to food. Our experience has been that connecting with food at the store, washing and cutting produce and creating delicious meals at home is one component in healing a disordered relationship to food. 
are you here for? Suppose you struggle with food. The solution might include using your intuition to select the best bell pepper at the store and then mindfully cutting it into pieces that end up in a stir fry. This all can lead to deep feelings of repair. It's critical to have sharp knives and adequate cooking equipment. Learn more about the powerful principles of mise en place. Still, there are many barriers that can exist. There are lots of reasons that people cannot seem to connect with shopping and cooking. Examples include, don't have adequate kitchen space or equipment and don't know where to start. Sharing kitchen space with others and don't feel comfortable in that part of the house. Have had others feed you for so long and have never been expected to feed yourself. Have bad memories in the kitchen. Have not built grocery shopping into your weekly routine and it therefore feels like a burdensome addition to your schedule. Feel anxious at the grocery store because there's so many items and you have no idea what they are and perhaps you don't enjoy crowded environments. Have purchased groceries in the past only to see them spoil and expire in the fridge. It feels like money's been wasted. Tried cooking meals at home and have so much anxiety around making mistakes and sometimes end up over or under cooking foods. Seek comfort from food and cannot reliably predict that home cooking will produce comforting food. Don't like cleaning pots and pans or doing dishes. There are so many other barriers to shopping and cooking that can exist. Your next assignment is to inventory your barriers to grocery shopping, cooking, and even cleaning. These barriers could be financial, psychological, environmental, or any other reason why this feels so hard. Start with making a list. It may take some time to think about, as oftentimes such barriers are subconscious. Additionally, revisit your paragraph summarizing your intentions as an eater and add or modify language reflecting these emerging ideas. Consider adding some intention around mise en place. Now is the time to emphasize herbs and spices in your shopping and cooking. Refer to our guide on how to best use these and access some of our favorite recipes. You'll find that as you utilize more herbs and spices, you're likely to need less salt on food. While salt can be an important part of many dishes, there are health benefits to using less. Find your spot at the store and in the kitchen. There's a spot for you. Claim it. Own it. Heal from the past so you could start to fully live in the present. Oosh.